My name is Shana Dumankar, and I'm a curator based at Kurt Williams Museum in Harvard, Massachusetts, which is a property of the trustees. And I am showing some of my favorite works in the exhibition, Recruiting for Utopia, Print and the Imagination. And this exhibition is on view from September 2020 through March 2021. Uh, so this is what I like to call the female power wall. And I know with printed matter, it can seem pretty subtle. So I thought I would hone in on a couple of them to share what I mean by that. Um, so let's begin from right to left. Um, and the first largest work on this wall is a spirit drawing by Sarah Bates, uh, a shaker. And shaker spirit drawings were really a phenomenon that came, it was a thing that was behind the scenes, kept secret, and considered literal traces of them receiving the word of God. And the shakers were relatively unique and they might not have used the term feminist, but you could say that they were a feminist ahead of their time by thinking that Anne Lee, who founded the Shakers, was the human vessel before Christ returned. So upon the founding of the Shaker faith, Shakers believed they were living in that new millennium and that they were living in heaven on earth. Um, so this idea of art was art decoration, was art something that was besides the point? That's something that could take way longer than a three minute little gallery tour. <laughs> but I just wanna bring it up when I say that um, I put this spirit drawing into the exhibition as an opposite and yet a contemporary of a Millerite chart that was advertising the world would end on March 21st, 1843. Um, it does have similarities. However, rather than printed, it is made by hand. The similarities are the borders, um, multiple registers, um, and also animals combined with, um, animals and other parts of the living world combined with text. Um, but it gives a feeling of hope, um, and it really is kind of a calming and beautiful thing due to the symmetry and the care with which it's made. And ultimately, it's a message of hope. Um, and then beside it, we have a really uniquely way, a unique way to share the life history of Ann Lee. So as I had said, um, Aunt, Mother Ann Lee founded the Shaker faith in England and then was really a refugee to the United States because she and the other Shakers were persecuted. They were literally beaten for their faith. And when they came to the US, they didn't meet a much warmer reception. And that is detailed in this calligraphic life story. However, they continued and the Shakers would bodily protect Anne Lee, um, including in this square house right here in Harvard, Massachusetts. Um, and then finally, I wanted to highlight this broadside, which is advertising a lecture with the one and only Sojourner Truth. And <clears throat> it was made around 1880, although it's not dated, and it's part of the Communal Society's collection at the Burke Library at Hamilton College in New York. And Sojourner Truth is an activist who is honored to this day for her amazing speeches fighting racism and sexism. She was enslaved for 30 years before gaining her freedom and changing her name to Sojourner Truth. Um, in her narrative, which, you know, it's a book that I do recommend, she does recount her brief experience as a Millerite, or she at least attended a Millerite um, sermon, and it wasn't for her. She also mentions wanting to visit Fruitlands, but in terms of Massachusetts links, Sojourner Truth did work at a silk mill in Northampton, and they were working to find a way other than cotton, um, you know, to have thread and other um, textiles because they were not wanting to use things made by enslaved people. Um, this case contains many other fascinating things that I just have to tempt you with for now, but through other media over the course of the winter, we will be sharing some more details. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, goodbye.